Okay, so we're up and running with the recording. All right. Um, thanks very much for tuning in. Fantastic to see 90 here. I can only take that the fact that you heard mine and Jack's names attached, that that's what's drawn a crowd. Um, we, we'll say the donors is on the other boys now in the office to see if they can get as big a numbers. Um, anyway, right. We won't try and keep you for too long. We won't rush through things either. The, the premise of our, our series of webinars um, is be ready to coach. So I haven't analysed any new um, restrictions being lifted or anything like that, but it's looking and we're, we're, we're getting closer, please God, to getting back to a, to a pitch um, soon. So we we'll want to make sure that we're ready to coach. So we're taking that um, in, a, in two different ways. We're talking about the actual content that we're delivering, what games, drills, activities we're actually setting out for our players, and also then our, we're, we're being mindful of our, our coaching skills. Okay, so some of this you'll have seen before, some of it you 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 won't. This might be you might be a very experienced coach. Coach, this might be your first time coaching at this level, sevens or nines. Um, um, or you could be a complete novice. That's that's fine. We're going to cater for everyone, please God, here today. Okay. So without much further ado, we will go and we will we'll get the ball rolling here. All right. So um, we're going to go through the Gaelic start. We're going to through a couple of fundamental skills. We're going to talk about our how to coach skills, and we're going to go. Um, I'm going to share my screen at the end, and I'm going to go through a couple of resources, um, for you. So the Gaelic start. You're probably talking about your under sevens. Um, it's developing the uh, developing very pardon the fundamental movement skills um, of Gaelic games, and, and let's be honest, those first two columns underneath the ABCs or JTs, they're common to pretty much an awful lot of field sports. Okay, so take basketball, take rugby, take soccer. You're going to have agility, balance, coordination. You're going to have running, jumping, throwing. Okay, and then probably a little bit more for for Gaelic games, uh, catch, pass kick and strike okay and um, striking and now normally i make the joke about the striking is for um striking of the ball and hurling or rounders not actually um you know hitting someone so i that's that joke made i feel obliged to make it every time all right so they're the basic skills at under seven level if you cover nothing else bar your abcs your agility your balance your coordination you have to uh, input those into every training session you're running you're jumping you're throwing okay you're catching you're passing you're kicking so agility you're talking about side to side movement pushing off the right foot pushing off the left foot balance is obviously straightforward hand eye coordination eye foot coordination hand to foot coordination when you're soloing so you're running we're not talking about um speed or stamina we're talking about at under seven level think starting right stopping right at a starting with one foot in front of the other or the stopping with the two feet together almost like a like a jump sh stop in in a uh, basketball um are they able to run sideways backwards so you're jumping then you're jumping from a stand and start you're jumping run and jump jumping backwards a long jump a high jump all that sort of stuff throwing why is throwing in there well, let's be honest about it. If I'm if I'm five years of age and I go up to training, please God, next month sometime, and I can't throw the ball and hit it against a target, and all of a sudden I can't do that, and yet then you're asking me to um, hand pass the ball. Well, geez, I'm going to struggle, okay? So make sure that you um, you work on throwing. Like, just visually, they're, they're knocking... Um, skittles down, they're knocking cones down so I can get that throw in motion from behind my right hand that I'm going to hit the ball with eventually for a hand pass you're throwing and you're not you're getting that, that hand pass motion in okay, so then you're catching so your your high catch, your low catch your body catch so you're passing now I would try in, in, in my work with the schools I would try to divide uh, passing not into hand pass, fist pass, kick pass. I would try to look at short range passing, medium range, long range. And what you're, what you're almost subconsciously getting the kids to do is they get to decide for themselves, my short range 
might be Jack's medium range. So a short range pass is a hand pass, nice and gentle, nice and soft. Um, a medium range pass then is a fist pass. You need a little bit more power in, but you don't want to be given a fist pass close range, okay? Because it's harder to, to give softly. There's a bit more power behind it. And I'm seeing that an awful lot. There's a not an inability, but they're, they're, the kids sometimes are trying to get, they're hard to, they're getting it hard to differentiate between, well, I'm standing a meter away from someone and I'm, I'm still giving a fist pass. Okay, so that should be hand pass range. And then obviously long range is is um, is a kick pass. Okay, so then you break the kick pass and up. You've got your, your punt kick really off the laces, that nice crisp um, contact with the ball. And then that, you know, that hook kick. Okay, so you, you're kicking for a score or you're you're turning into the ball as you kick as you kick for a nice long range pass. And then the striking, um, you know, you're talking about at that age, it doesn't have to be um, if you introduce a hurl, we're going to talk with stations in a wee second. If you introduce a hurley or if you introduce a bat, doesn't mean that they're they're doing hurling training or rounders training, but they're getting they're getting hand eye coordination. It's something visual. It's something fun. It's another piece of equipment, um, and unlocks a lot of different games for them in the stations mode. That the you know is great. Anything you can get them to do the whole range of activities is fantastic, and and is what you want in the long run. OK, so like I mentioned, how are we going to work on that? We're going to use stations. So for anyone that that's seen this before, um, my experience of it is is setting it up. First of all, in a state in inside in a hall um, having five or six stations on the right hand side facing back into the wall, having five or six stations on the left hand side facing back into the wall. So you can see there's we um, we take the one on the left hand side we buy here um, on the red cone, he's going through the ladders, jumping over the hurdle, dodging around the blue cones and going back around down the outside. And he would high five the next person. So you're talking, I would say no more than four, five max at a station. Um, and they would you would allow two, three minutes for that station. And then um, you blow the whistle. The team that was in station one up here in the top left corner moves over to the right um the team that was in two moves to three three moves to four and four moves to one okay or whatever version uh, that works so you're getting everyone's getting a twist at each station the numbers are small at each station so that there's less time for messing um and you know ideally under sevens under nines you want as many people there as you can so you, you rope a parent in and you could just say here johnny stand between these two stations here and make sure do we bit of crowd control they don't they don't run away or they don't kill each other or just keep a wee eye on it. Okay. So that's station number one there in the top left. We move across the top right. We call it number two. So this one is throwing and catching. Look, he's jumping over a balance beam or going underneath it. He's bouncing the ball over. He's rolling the ball under the second one. That could be against the wall. So it could be throw against the wall, catch, run back to the start, hand the ball, high five over. Probably not allowed high five now with COVID or whatever you're allowed meant to do, elbow bump or fist bump or a nod and a wink, whatever whatever you're meant to do. Okay, so this one here, just down below it, we go uh, station three, blue cone starting off, ball on top of a, an upside down triangular cone. They're walking along a line um, and look at the, could be bouncing that ball into the hoop at the, at the end and then walking back down through the line. Now that line, if you're indoors, you could, for something that's fun, we've done it before, put it on a bench that they're walking along a bench. You put blue mats down either side, you know, the soft mats. So if they fall off it, they're grand. Um, you know, use your judgment. You're going to know your players um, a lot better than me explaining it. Okay. But anything where you can use lots of equipment, lots of colors is visual, is fun. Tell them that that's lava. They can't fall in the lava or they lose a life. Kids are going to love that. Okay. They really are. You move across to the last one here. So you've got your, your line, you've got your bean bags, you've got, you know, red, yellow, and green hoop. Move furthest away from being the green. That's a million points if you throw your, your bean bag into the um, green hoop. You know, that's 500 points there. It's a big drop from a million, in fairness. Okay, or whatever. You know, be use it. Kids love it. Oh, that's a thousand points. Wow, imagine if I get that and they'll come back to you and they'll have a hundred million points or whatever. So, um, you can then use, you know, different colors. They have to throw the red one into the 
red. You have to throw the green bean bag into the green. Again, colors, visual, games, imagination. They're gonna love that. Okay, so that's that's um that's just kind of we've we've I'll show you in the resource section at the end. We've got loads of stuff on stations. You're not gonna run out of ideas on stations. Okay, so you've got some stuff here again, top left. You've got targets that could be throwing against the wall, kicking against the wall, hand passing, throwing over their head, throwing from underneath their body, an underarm throw, throwing from the side, like um, um, like the the, the first action of a of a hand pass, almost if I, if I'm allowed to say it, like a like a soccer goalie rolling the ball out to the side. Okay, um. So, you know, there's a target game from them, a million points. Now, you could have that against the wall. You could have that chalk drawn in. You could have that, um, you know, with a bit of um, insulating or mask and tape, different colours and, and written down. You can use targets against the wall um, just with a bit of photo, you know, paper and a, an X written on it or a circle written on it. Use your imagination. The chalk's a really good one. Okay, very handy to come off and, and very handy to... Um, very handy maybe not as handy to get nowadays but uh, very handy to use okay so look at the one on the right bouncing right bouncing left so when she approaches the one on the right hand side she bounces the ball on the right with her right hand with her left hand vice versa um you know try and involve the ball the whole time so this guy here in in, in station number three the bottom right you could be just zigzagging running around those cones okay they could be carrying a bean bag, but look, they could be carrying a football. And even something as simple as when they're running around that first cone, the cone is going to be on their right hand side, get them to hold the ball in the left. So, what you're eventually doing there is you're giving them an introduction to keeping the ball on the outside away from a tackler. Do you need to go in and explain that to a five or six year old? Absolutely not. But you can do little things like that that will pay dividends perhaps down the road. OK, and again, there's a perfect example on the left, bottom left one, number four, you know, re uh, red, yellow, red um, hoops. So that could be bouncing the ball, that could be solo, that could be throw up and catch a body, catch a low catch, whatever, and then use the wall, rebound against the wall and away we go. All right. So there's a couple of other ones just for the for variety. Salem run, Salem run around the poles there. Score a goal, million points. So we've in B there, you know, these are very obviously um, high tech designs that, that I've done from before. So we've used the pop up tunnels, great crack, knock over the cones, hurdles. You go as far as the cone and you kick over the one of the three cones there um, or throw a bean bag at them, throw a tennis ball at them, whatever you've got. Look, you get the idea here. Use your imagination. Um, most likely you've got kids at that age group um are, are not too far away don't be afraid to plug into them and, and get um get get some ideas from stations from them all right so just the last slide just a wee bit of overkill but so you can look back on this on the on the youtube video of this which will be available in the morning there's the way that that was a session i would have taken with under six and could hill um got a number of years ago now more than i can care to remember at this stage but so a, B, C, D, E, top half of the page will be going against the wall. And then just for the purposes of, of, of the diagram here, but F, G, H, I, and J would have been the opposite way around, going back to down towards the wall, um, you know, closest to them. So you're using the wall the whole time. Two minutes, I would say, I think we ended up having maybe 50 in those first couple of ones. So you've got 10 stations there. Okay, so you're talking five to a station. You're talking two or three minutes, then A moves to B to C, etc. J, when they're finished, moves to A and, and the whole way down. Um, I would have made sure that I would have had a coach between A and B, C and D, maybe E and, e and J, and then another F and G, and then one in between, okay? And maybe another parent or two, you know, um, on the floor helping as well. I would have left myself free. Um, now, that's not to avoid work. That's always that's no harm, but that's to make sure that you can coordinate, make sure everything's going fine. That if someone is um, hurt or injured or needs a little bit of one on one bounce and catch for those 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes of that station, that you can provide that. Um, and then also that you're in charge, you're in charge at a time, blow the whistle, move around. Okay. 
So you can imagine that if you're playing, by the time you explain that, um, you know, whether you want to explain it at the start, go through all 10, whether you explain just uh, two at a time, okay, so you're allowing another minute uh, every third station, um, or whatever way you decide to work it. But there's 10 stations there, three minutes, so that's 30 minutes easily. If you factor in another five, six, seven minutes for explaining and the, the changeover, which could very easily happen, you're talking closer to 40 minutes now. If you get them to in a hall to pull all that, all the kids to pull that all the way off to the side at the end and you play a couple of chasing games, catching games, TIG games, Simon says, that's another 10 minutes easily. And there's, there's an hour of your under sevens. And you would be amazed how much running jumping, throwing, catching, kicking, passing, agility, balance, coordination that each child would be doing in those 50 minutes of the 60 that they're active. Okay. And they're doing so much learning, learning, sorry. So, you know, even if, you know, you did a couple of months of that, a couple of weeks of that, having said that, mixing up the stations all the time, don't hit them with the same 10 ones there every time. you you're going to cover an awful lot of the basics, you know, the fundamental movement skills. All right. So we're just moving on to our, our games, and these aren't exclusive to under sevens. Okay, so there's six family of games here. So you've got your target, your court, your field games, and then your, your non-invasion, your part invasion, your full invasion. So the games that, that look a wee bit more like the, the, the game of, of, of Gaelic football. So you're talking tower ball, bounce ball, partner roll, I'm not going to go through all these and explain them individually. They are going to be in the resources that we're going to send out to you um, in the morning as well. OK, so you've got court games over the river. OK, prisoner ball and um, you've got field games and the like, rounders games. These games are brilliant. The we even mini rounders games. So me against Jack. I'm in one cone and um, there's a cone three meters out in front of me. I kick the ball anywhere. Jack has to feel it, and I run out to the, that cone and back in as many times as I can. Jack must bring air ball back to that cone, tap tap it down, and that stops me. Okay, so my score then is five. Jack gets his turn, and he's to try and beat me. So that's a one-on-one -on -one rounders game. I don't, know whether, I don't know whether that's quick rounders or Danish rounders, you know, whatever. Um, that's a really cool game to play, and you could play that at, at any age group. You could have two kickers against one catcher, or two against two, two fielders against one kicker. And, you know, when you're using two kickers, you can start to be a little bit, um, a little bit um, selective about who you put together. So you could put uh, Jack with me. I have a poor kick. Jack is a very good one. So, you know, the fact that the both balls are in play means that, you know, we're both going to get running, um, you know, for a nice distance or for a nice time because Jack's kick is going to be better than mine. They're going to have take them longer to get it. Okay, so you've got non-invasion games like circle score, rotate defender, team ball pass, landmines, part invasion games, pressure square, space invaders, wide man and opposite corners in, in full invasion. Okay, so don't feel like I'm, I'm flying through this bit, which might be what you really want is, is the resources. That's coming and we're going to go through that at the end. Okay. So just again, for the, for the coaching part of it, the fundamental skills, so when you're introducing probably start, you know, the older under sevens, the, the, the under nines, certainly, when you're going through, you're, you're teaching them the actual skills of the game. There's skill cards available to you, and then we would suggest that you use the idea method. Okay, we'll, we'll go on this again. And then when you're, when you're using your activities, make sure you have the ability to to change it so you make it harder you make it more challenging okay you make it easier you want them to get more um to want to be more successful at it so you know you don't want if you're doing a kicking and you're kicking for scores where you start them off in the 20 meter line and you know none of the balls are are going to reach the goal line you put them on the small square and then you bring them back out you know to the penalty spot and then you bring them back out maybe to the 13 OK, so you want to be able to make things easier and harder. So there's our, our, our skill cards. Again, they're in the resources that we have. Um, 
we've got uh, they're pretty cool actually research now they're they're, they're a little bit a little bit uh, dated we've got a picture of um we've got a picture of i think from anna tom i think it would be tom brewster in in uh in crow park so um we're allowed to make those touches now that we that we won last year there was a while that we had to keep our head down um so on the on the front of it you've got the skill what exactly it is we've got some key coaching points um some do's and don'ts and then on the back of it you've got a couple of activities there you know a a, a basic one um an intermediate one maybe a hard one and then a couple of games related around that activity as well okay maybe you've seen them before maybe you haven't but they're 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 pretty cool um resource do a little bit of homework beforehand on and um you know you've got a very good resource there and again let me say if you're a novice if you've never played football before if um this is your first time coaching don't be afraid of getting one of the the players to do it okay to perform that skill and you talk them through it okay so when i talk about talking them through it we're talking about coaching a skill using the idea method so you're talking about introducing demonstrating explain and execute and then you know the i would i would i would argue the most important bit the spotting and fixing to making sure that if somebody's doing it well you're you know praising them if somebody's um technique is incorrect that you're spotting that and you're fixing it you're you know because if a child is doing it a certain way if they're never told otherwise they will assume that they're doing it the right way which makes sense okay the step method for changing an activity so you're talking about changing up the space the time the task the equipment and the players so we'll just go on to the next slide okay so you see you've got the idea method there so uh, introduce it what is it? what are you introducing when do you use it why would you use it so it's a kick pass you use it for long range pass and why because it's too far for a fist pass or a hand pass demonstrate it show it several times show it from um, different angles and give the, the if you can't break it down into i would say three max coaching points you haven't taught it through enough so for a kick pass same hand same foot off the laces and um, point your toe where you want the ball to go one two three and you reiterate those coaching points the whole time they're doing the activity um, the explain and execute we don't want to rush it but you want to get the you know introduction demonstration and explanation of the drill that they're about to do or the activity they're about to do as quick as you can okay attention spans are what they are i'm conscious i'm talking for 20 minutes now at this stage so um hopefully your attention spans are a little bit better but get them to the stage where you ask them are they are they do they understand jack David, Johnny, Billy, Laura, whatever it is, did you understand? What's give me one coaching point? Give me one thing you meant to do. Point your toe where you went to where you want the ball to go. Great. Okay, then let them at it. Now, like I said here, the purple, the A, you have to assess what they're doing. Reiterate the coaching points. Fix mistakes. Praise good technique. And that won't happen unless you're standing over them, walking through them, making sure that it's um making sure that it's going the way you want if you're off setting up another drill or checking the phone or having the crack with one of the coach off the other side of the field you won't see that happening okay so be aware you need to be a good planning you need to have everything set up in advance to make sure that that flows okay so changing um an activity this the step method um space so you're talking about making an area smaller or bigger longer or smaller that will, depending on what you're doing, make it harder or easier, more challenging. The time and the task of T. So you're talking about the time, duration on the ball. Okay, so the duration um, of uh, the drill itself. Do you go for a minute? Do you go for two minutes? Do you go for 10 seconds? Do you go for 15 seconds? Okay. Um, just make sure your mics are off, folks. Okay. Um, and then the time on the balls. Probably that's for a wee bit of the older ones um about you know when you get the ball in a game you've only three seconds to make a decision okay um then the task so listen that's that's the one where you have the most amount of room for maneuvering 
so the task is what you've asked them to do so change what you want them to what you're asking them to do is changing the task so it could be first to five scores first to ten first to two no touches one touches number of passes you might use your opposite foot only okay you might have to do this game happen on one foot you know you might have to um have to get two passes um, before you score it, in schools I would use if you if you score with your opposite foot and I get them to pull up their sock they get five points instead of one it might be that you're um, you've got one um, you've got one player's really really strong and really really dominant so Jack there Jack you're doing really really well now I want you to do is for the next two minutes just set up players I've seen you score scoring is brilliant I want I want you to set them up okay do you need to announce that no, of course you don't. Okay, but so you're changing the task, you're changing the activity up, you're making it harder or easier. Equipment. Um, use a tennis ball, lose, use a, a schlitter, l- use a reaction ball, and make use, especially in your stations, your your ladders, your hurdles, your 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 tackle bags. So tackle bags, I'm, I'm not talking about nailing them with tackle bags, like you know, to get power in their solo or anything like that. I'm talking about a pretty fun one is, and it's not an easy one to coach. For um, doing a block, so you as the coach, you're doing a high solo. Get Jack there, come in and do a, a a block. If you throw a tackle bag or two tackle bags out, that Jack has to block and do a full length block and dive on the tackle bags. Jesus, they're gonna love that. Okay, you're doing it, making sure it's happening in a controlled environment. There isn't fifty of them jumping in on top of each other. Someone's gonna end up getting hurt, etc. But you know that's gonna be pretty cool for them. And the players, that's a pretty cool one that we don't maybe use as much. So change the numbers playing. So if you have 3v3, can you change to 4v2, 5v1? So even at, how does that apply to under sevens and under nines? So if you want to, you've got passing around in a, in a, in a square. So one past the two, pass the three, pass the four, back to one. Stick a wee player in there, in the middle of that square, and all of a sudden, that's 4v1, and that player is allowed, I don't know, take two steps away from the middle to intercept a ball. That becomes a completely different dynamic of the game, okay? Um, and then maybe you start limiting the time on the ball. So when you get the ball, you've only three seconds. So all of a sudden, a simple pass and drill by the addition of time on the ball and throwing a defender in there with the defender not allowed to go at 100%, you've changed that complete dynamic. Can you do that in under sevens? Of course you can. You might need to structure it. You might need to show them it a little bit more deliberately than at number nines, but you'll know what will what will work and not work with your players. Okay. So in practice, you use the skill cards and start coaching the skill in conjunction with the idea method. Um, you pick out the appropriate activities. So using the resource that we're just going to show you, and then we're talking about the step method then to make it harder or easier. I'm just going to draw reference to. Um, the uh, how to coach skills. Just we 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 covered this in the um, foundation. I'm going to take oh, two minutes, literally run through this. Okay, so you, you make sure you 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 know your players. You have a relationship and rapport. How do you do that? You use their names. You try and show an interest in them. If you can knock a bit of crack out of them at that age group, it's amazing how much they'll take on board. Listen, every single class that I've been in the last last couple of weeks since we've been allowed back knows that I'm off chocolate for Lent, knows that I can't wait for Easter Sunday. And I'm not joking. This is 100%. I can't wait for Easter Sunday to come. Okay. And I guarantee you, even though it'll have been three, maybe four, two, three weeks by the time I'm back with them after after Easter, the majority of the classes are going to go, well, what chocolate do you have first? Okay. There's a re- relationship. There's a bit of crack. Um, and, and all that's pretty cool, okay? And that's that's only 30, 40, 60 seconds at the start, okay? Um, your de- demonstration, make sure you position them so that they can see and hear that there's not a, a, a full-blown match going on behind you. They're not going to listen to it. Break it down into key points. Show it a couple of times. Show it a couple of angles. And make sure ask questions for understanding. Make sure when you're observing, take a look at the head, hands and feet. What's happening? What's going wrong? Make sure you look at them a couple of different times. And again, a couple of different angles. OK, and make sure it's working. Now, they analyze and, and make decisions. So when something's happening in front of you, make sure you compare what's happening 
with your idea of how it should happen. Identify the matching and mismatching points, and then you have a decision to make whether you're going to just you know reinforce keywords to make it swing back the way you want. Do you change it uh, by stopping it maybe straight away, or, or do you just make a note of it, take no immediate action, and come back to it at the end when you get a chance? Okay, the next natural break in the play or the game. Okay, and when you're when you're explaining something, plan what to say, gain attention before you you start talking. Hey, you know yourself. If you've got a group of twenty in front of you and there's three footballs, most of that group isn't going to be listening because the the footballs are going to be bounced and tipped about, and 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 that's a distraction. Keep it simple. Keep it brief when you can, and then you again you use your questions to check the task. Okay, you know yourselves. If I was unmuting it now and I was picking three names at random to go over what happened in the last um, the last slide, one, I'd say our numbers would drop from 104 very quickly, but the rest of you that would stay on would be listening possibly a little bit more intently than you are, okay? You're putting them on notice, you're keeping them on their toes. And then the feedback, very, very important, especially at that age group. You want to make sure that any feedback, any corrections that you're doing is given in the right way. You don't want to put them off. You don't want to have the feeling that they were wrong, okay? You want to tell them, um, you maybe, you know, promote self-analysis. What does that mean? If you ask Jack there, Jesus, what did you notice about your kick? Oh, well, it went way up in the air. Oh, okay, right. And would, you, would your toe have been up? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so if I wanted you to keep the ball down, what would you do? Oh, well, I'd, I'd, I'd point my toe down. So without just coming over and saying, Jack, you were wrong. Your toe was pinting up. You should have had pinting down. You're allowing him to arrive at the answer. Okay. Um, again, keep your information nice and simple, specific, and in a positive way. All right. And again, that check for understanding. Well, Jack, what are you going to do now? Well, Aidan, I'm going to point my toe down. Okay. And Jack, at all times, listening to listens to what I, I say. So that's the last slide. We're going to nip over onto sharing my screen and then we can um, we can uh, show you a couple of the resources. And Jack, maybe you might tell me if are you seeing my screen now? Um, yeah, seeing it now. Great job. OK, all right. So um, unfortunately, for some reason, well, not, not for some reason, I know why. The chat box isn't working and normally we just stick in the, the link to the coaching resources. We'll get that put together in an email and we send it out to you in the morning. Um, so we've got under sevens coaching resources, we've got under nines um, and we've got um, another couple of things coming to clubs today and, and tomorrow morning as well. So that will be, be part of, um, of what you're looking at and be good benefit for the club. OK, so we've got Gaelic start, we've got skill cards, fundamental book, booklet. So here's some station cards for um agility so actually sorry, i'll show you what that is so you go into gaelic start and you've got games stations warm-up games look at all the stations you've got there okay don't want to go too quick but i want to try and get through as much as i can I'm conscious of the time you've got I picked out a couple you've got agility so there's your little diagram there's your rules on how to play across the right hand side there's your focus such as you need it how do you make it harder how do you make it easier what's the coaching points Watch the what's the equipment? Just that can't be any easier. Okay, you've got loads there. There's one for balance. Naturally enough, it's one I've shown earlier. Ice cream run. Okay, etc. There's one on kicking. So there's a very simple one through the gates. Okay. Sometimes don't get caught up on stations just being for under under sevens. You could do five or six stations or three or four stations as part of a warm up with under nines. Get loads of touches, get loads of visual, get loads of running done at the very start, and then you know you can use your next block to um to uh, work through whatever skills or the rest of your session. So we've got a, a game section there. We've got over the river, and we've got some um, YouTube videos, and that will show you in a second. So there's a diagram how you set it up. There's some rules. There's some attack. You know your focus, how you do scoring, how you make it harder how you make it easier, coaching points and equipment. Okay. All there, they can be printed out, print them out back to back if you if you if you can. Keep them in on your computer. Um have your link among your coaches WhatsApp group. I'm assuming every club was a coach's WhatsApp group there. 
Um, and God, even if you want, you could print them out back to back and nominate them. You've a pretty cool resource to have, and you have it forever. There's another game there. Um, stylish is drawing. Big cunt bombardment. Played this the other week there with junior infants, senior infants, first class. They love it. Okay, team on the top in A, team in the bot uh, in section E. You have a line there that they're not meant to cross, which they will cross every single time, and basically just have to kick the footballs, knock the cones over, million points every time you knock the cone over. Okay, it's so to that if the ball's coming from A across the E, there no one's going to get nailed with a ball. Okay, that there's enough space between them to uh, for the power to be taken out of the ball. Okay, stop every two, three, four minutes. You have 15 seconds, boys and girls, to put the flip the cones back up and get back to your line. They're going to do that in half that time. Great job. A couple of warm-up games there. Volcanoes and craters. Um, I've been calling it dinosaurs and dragons. Fixers and destroyers. Cups and saucers. Reds have to knock the cones over. Uh, blues have to keep them the right way around. Um, et cetera, et cetera. There's absolutely loads of warm-up games there as well. All right. So you've got that for... That's the Gaelic start. There's warm-up games. There's for the under sevens, and I'm going to go back into under nines. You've got skill cards. There's a fundamental booklet, booklet there with a lot of stuff, and you've got some useful links for under nines as well. I'm going to just bend your ear for another couple of minutes before we go. Um, we've got a decent enough, I would think, at this stage, YouTube channel, Calvin Coaching and Games, um, and we've got loads of videos there. Okay, Some of it, like your youth development sessions, aren't going to be applicable to our under sevens and under nines. Some of it here in, a, no, I've, I'm wearing two coats there. I want everybody to understand that. Okay. Um, in the alphabet fun game, look at some of those you can do um, at the time on your pitch. Some of those you can send and um, they can do at home and knock a wee bit of crack out of. Um, some of it you can do then on the pitch or you can do um, some stuff that we send out to, to classes. Um, this will be where you will find this presentation tomorrow. So when you're having trouble logging in, um, this will be available, probably upload overnight and be there tomorrow. Um, also, what we will have coming to you is our under sevens playlist. So you've got a load of different games and videos relevant to under sevens over the river. There's a, um, a webinar from the junior cycle, junior of second class. There's a, um, a, a wee solo and drill. There's wall ball drill, beginner stage, uh, beat your score, knee solos, body catch, hand pass challenge, the alphabet game that you saw, mini obstacle course, etc., etc. Okay, and we've got the same for the under under nines, and there's six, a few more videos for it, and we're adding to them the whole time. Okay, not going to go into all of them. Um, what we're kind of saying is the resources are there for you. Um, and it's a matter of you spending that little bit of time prepping and putting them together and, and looking through, having your resources there that you can pick them out when, when please God, we get back, um, hopefully next the tail end of the next month or whenever it is, onto the pitch. So there's a couple of things coming to you. I'm going to send you the link, the emails to your coaching officer, the same person that got the information for this. Um, I'm going to send you the link to the under nines and under sevens one drive this resource um folder okay and has all these other things across the top i'm going to send you the link to the under sevens and under nines youtube playlist and i'm also going to ask you to spend 30 seconds put in your name your club your mobile number your team's coach so whether it be under sevens or under nines or both the number of players at whichever age group your id is and then a name your email address and then, do you consent to be placed in a county-wide WhatsApp group for your age grade? Yes or no? So what I'm hoping to do is get the 35 under-7 coaches, stick them all in a WhatsApp group, and any information relative to under-7s, we're going to fire it out. So it might be a new video. It might be something to an eye. It might be goal games fixtures. You will use it then, I would imagine, to maybe source games to, to you know, um, there's a blitz on this weekend or you know we're looking for a challenge match Saturday week we've got two teams of 10 anyone up for anyone available okay so we're going to have a, a resource like that um, and then even at its most basic level we'll have all the coaches so you'll be able to know who's over McHugh under 7s who's over Coot Hill under 9s 
whatever the case may be. Okay, so do for under sevens and do one for un, uh, under nines. Um, if you don't want to be in it, hey, that's cool. No worries. Um, the last thing I'm going to say before I take any questions, we've got a, a club coaching plan coming to you. Some of you will have got it today. Some of you are getting it tomorrow. Some of you are getting it t- uh, uh, tomorrow morning, later on tonight, whatever the case may be. They're based on SWOT analysis um, that we received from clubs. Now, unfortunately, only 30% of the clubs have um, responded to that SWOT analysis. So we'll be given another opportunity to clubs to submit that. If you don't submit it, we don't really have anything to work of, work off that we can formulate a plan. So basically, you give us a couple of areas that you want a little bit more help in. Uh, we can be a little bit more focused in our dealings with you. Um, and, um, and we work from there. So just put a little bit of... Um, a little bit of a roadmap on our on our interactions this year, and then at its most basic level, helping you in the areas that you want help. That's part of a coaching plan that is a lot of the a lot more of what we talked about tonight, resource wise, and a lot more. Okay, so a lot more training sessions, a lot more stuff. So this will be coming on electronic copy, and also then you can print it off and um, to have a hard copy. Um, I think that's about the longest I've ever talked continuously. So I'm going to take a, a, a breath here and I'm going to ask any questions and um, stick your hand up and we might, uh, we might call on you then. Okay. Any questions at all? Don't leave me with dead time to, have to talk through again. Um, would you say that, the, sorry, it's Dara here. Um, would you say that the under sevens and the under nines is a different um, sort of technique with the under sevens where um, it's there's a more fun kind of driven to keep them interested and in less seriousness or is that a fair comment to make yeah sometimes yeah. You get trainers that take it extremely serious yeah, and yeah. there's a lot of, they want discipline and they want respect yeah. sometimes you get some mouthy children and mm-hmm. <laughs> you know and then you kind of have to say well look lads you know we're here to let yeah in that. I, would, I would suggest that Put it in other ways, at under nines, there's more of a, you have to be preparing them for games. Um, and obviously, their goal games are not competitive. They're, you know, I don't know, is there tournaments at under seven and under nines? Uh, I mean, possibly, but you're preparing them for games. You'd be a lot of football matches. You know, your your training sessions will look a lot more like football training sessions than the under sevens. I would suggest that your under sevens, your, your job, such as it is, is to make sure that they have good grounding, a good foundation, a good introduction to the fun. Uh, you keep everyone that you have at the start, your ABCs, your run and jump and throw-ins. Um, it, it depends as well on, on the size of the club. Some clubs might split your under sevens that there's a, almost an under fives. Certainly it was under sixes when I did it in Coothill a couple of years ago. And we there was a natural break with ones that were at school and ones that were at preschool. You know, the ones that were at school probably needed to be challenged that little bit more. The ones that were, weren't were at school needed to be more fun and games and activity and, and would just be general general activities and general movement and fitness like that with ball skills thrown in. So that's something that um, is up to each club to know what's the best um best fit for their club and their scenario and their numbers it might be practical it might be feasible maybe you'd like to do it but it won't work or maybe that's exactly what you need to do so i hope that answers dara your question yeah thank you there's anyone else there stick the hand up dara mccarthy yeah i just wondering uh could you give me an example say if you were taking a, a an under seven or an under nine session say on a saturday how would you prepare for that so like so what way would you you know would you be saying Saturday morning or would you say Friday night would you sit down and have a look at what you're going to do, what you did for the last couple of weeks? Or yeah, yeah. well, I think it'd be no harm for it to fit into maybe not a long-term season, but, you know, an idea of, well, the next four weeks I'm going to take hand passing, catching, kick passing, and then maybe something like the pickup. And then, you know, I would start off your session possibly asking a couple of questions about, well, who you know, we did hand passing last week. Who do we get out? Um, who got out practicing during the week doing hand passing? Oh, I saw Dara. I saw Brendan. I saw Adrian out kick pass or hand passing. Anyone else? Oh, I did. I did. I did. Brilliant. That's great. So you're relating, you know, you're relating that back to last week. Um, I would try and do maybe involve your warm with a couple of hand passing drills or get them to practice and that skill again. 
um, and then you do your idea with your kick passing that you and tell them today we're working on kick passing. Do your idea. Um, you'd have this done. You wouldn't be doing it Saturday morning. You'd be putting it together on the Friday. Maybe have a wee WhatsApp group among your coaches at under. We call it under nines, Dara. You know, right? Well, we're going to do this. Then we're going to do this. Listen, I'm going to take the lead on on this, and then we're going to break up into three groups of six or seven, whichever it's going to be, and then we're going to work on this skill. You take group one, um, I'll take group two, and then Johnny, you're going to take group three. Then you maybe split up and you play a couple of different games around kick pass, and it could be all together. It could be split up. It could be rotating around. And then, you know, you'd be finishing off with maybe just a general game, but have a, a very good emphasis on the kick pass. So you could be scoring a goal in it, but a good kick pass, the referee could could allow that team a goal as well. Um, you'd need that to be happening um, beforehand. Listen, it's not going to take, you know, a team's meeting on the Friday night beforehand to organise that. A couple of minutes in a WhatsApp message. Once you have a general framework template there that you're working off for the next couple of weeks, um, you know, it's a matter of, of changing it and then just assigning roles and making sure people are, are prepared and, and they're not they're not um, getting landed as they're down when they come down there and they have to think on the feet, geez, I don't know what, I wasn't meant to be doing this, I've no idea, you know, God, I'm not very comfortable doing this. So hope that answers your question, Dara. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, man, thank you. All right. Uh, Park, love a suicide there. Unmute yourself and have at it. Yeah, uh, thanks a million. Thanks for all the resources, lads, as well. Just a quick question. What's your opinion on, you know, say for under nines, okay, you're going to have some kids, uh, we find ourselves, that might have only come up, say, around the town and might have only come up to training, maybe they only started when they're eight or nine. So they're a long way behind maybe other kids that are nine. So if we were doing like, uh, that are nine, that are maybe there since they're five years of age. So if we were doing stations, sometimes what we do with this is, maybe have weaker weaker groups in a station or weaker lads all together in a station and then maybe stronger lads together in a station. It's not really separating them. Like We don't want to separate them, but we find sometimes that the training can be better when you put maybe stronger with each other and weaker. And, and same with the small side of games. Sometimes we find if you have like two on two or three on three, if they're all around the same ability, it's not like one or two, say, strong nine-year-olds completely controlling it. So I just wanted to know what your opinion or maybe other lads' opinion in other clubs on that. Yeah, I would have to agree. I wouldn't have a problem with what you're doing there at all. Um, training needs to be challenging. So you're you're putting the three-on-threes, the stronger lads, they're going to challenge each other. The ones that are maybe just getting started with football, they're being challenged by being, you know, a, a similar level so that, you know, you'll be able to challenge them. And move. if you put them in with the, the, the ones that are playing the, you know, since they're five, how many touches are they going to get? Um, how how confident are they going to feel where you've got Joey beside you there that can, you know, kick the ball 20 metres and I'm just learning how to kick the ball maybe off the ground, first of all, and then, you know, out of my hands. So I don't think there's anything problem with that. Um, you know, if you want to make sure that, you know, if you've got three sections of games coming up and um, maybe you, you pick teams like how you've been picking, um, for the first section of games within your training session, your next one, you maybe just go completely four or five or six random teams, completely mixed ability, and then you can swing back to your original teams again. Okay, that takes a lot of coordination. Of course it does. Um, but you know maybe maybe it might be mightn't be a bad thing to do every now and again, just so uh, just so to make sure that you you can you can say you you try you try both ways and then you feel. Look at based on that, you know, we're we're um we're confident that the way we choose is the best way for everyone. I would certainly be in line with you know, I wouldn't have to, to complain about um what you're doing there, Paul. All right, no cheers. Any any other questions there? Can I just, yeah. Yeah, just building on that point, um I suppose good performance is, is compelling and you've got peer development too. So sometimes um, you could have a weaker, weaker kids in with stronger kids and because they're their peers and they look up to them that they actually push themselves. So th there's probably a balance to be reached in terms of splitting them up. 
But yeah, I'm, I'm 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 nodding I'm nodding away, and then I realised that you can't see me nodding. Um, yeah, no, that's just, that's a very uh, valid point as well. Uh, but just, just 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 I suppose uh, to to develop on that point, what about the lads that let's say under sevens and under nines and under nines and under elevens that that might be at the upper age limit, so you, you could have a you could have a, a fella at, at under nine, and he he could be nearly a year older than some of the other players. What's your thoughts on maybe them moving across groups, uh, moving up to under 11 um, for, for, for portions of training? Um, I suppose while still having them feeling not bigger than the group that they're, that they're with and I suppose not uh, creating a divide within the group. Is, is that something that you think is encouraged or that you'd, you'd kind of guard against? I would give a politician's answer and I would say a bit of both. Um, I would... I wouldn't have a problem with it as a general point of view. I wouldn't be pulling them out of training for the under nines and go off down and train with the under 11s. If it was on different evenings or, um, or on afterwards or if they were involved in the games, I, I would have uh, less of a problem. I would just watch the movement from the training. But ultimately, you're trying to challenge players. So um, it has happened. You know, I remember in my time, there was a, there was a, a, week, a weaker under nines and the under 11s and you know we had there was a, a nine-year-old and was very very good and wasn't getting challenged with under nines and was at the under 11s but you want to make sure that he's there for the under nines as well because he'll bring like we talked about earlier on he'll bring more with him you know he was a strong player for that so you didn't want to miss him um so it's a balancing act and, and it's a little bit it's a little bit like you know you'll know what's best in Ghana um, you know what works best. What works best with the dynamics and the players. You know your players an awful lot better than a lot better than any general advice um, that I I could give. So you know my advice might work in for that age group in Cornerfin. It might be the wrong for Gauna next year. It might be the right advice. Do, do, do you understand what I mean? So I'm conscious of of I suppose, hedging my bets with any answers I give. No, oh, thanks for that. Yeah. No, dead on. Yeah, Jason, go ahead. Hi, um, as we said earlier, thanks for all the resources. Just on, on that point, um, I, I've i seen it uh, in the training that um, you can have the strong kids and uh, the weak kids, but if you separate them, be it to try to develop either side, you're not doing either any of the many uh, favours from what I've been seeing. And what I've heard in a few different places is that the weak kids just think we're on the weak team. So what we've tried to do is mix it up. Uh, we haven't we haven't gone from the strong to weak. We've we've mixed ability in the team, in the training, and you can put the strong kids on the strong kids and the weak kids on the weak kids. And uh, now, if you're talking a massive difference uh -huh. in the problem, uh, you have to do some. You can challenge the kids either way, but I see once once you're separating them, like I heard after coming off from a, a blitz or a, a, a game, uh, it was another team, and we're saying we're, we're with the, the weak team again. You know, they're seven and nine years of age. Like, there's no mm. all-stars. I'm not going to train all-stars at that age. It's about inclusion, about fun, and if, if they can't go to school the next day and say that, you know, I was on the weak team again and I'm here and that, we're, we're failing them. It's my personal opinion, like so. Absolutely, every club, small or big, will always have strong kids and weak kids. And it's us as coaches; we have to bring them all on, and develop them as best we can. So, I, I my own personal opinion is, I don't separate it. I would try to match match the players as best I could, and try to give everybody at the different drills in the whole lot. Then you can challenge the really good players, as you were saying earlier, when they're good in their right foot, everything's through their left foot. You know, yeah, you're, you're given you're given an individual instruction. You're saying yes. Brendan, Mark, Jerry, there, and that's a similar enough one. Aiden, Mark, Jack, you know, you yes. Mark, Jack, yeah, okay, that's that's pretty cool too. So you're yeah. you're probably doing it in a different way. Uh, you know, you're 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 challenging them in a different way and mix and match in a different way. Okay, maybe less obvious. Yeah, okay, I can have a that too, Jason. Yeah, fair enough. P Porik. Yeah, sorry, just to go back on my comment there. Just in relation to the goal games, it, that's a different thing, which I would, I can understand because uh, we've had that as well we, when we've done, we've done mixed teams and we've done weak and strong teams. And sometimes kids will come on off and go, gee, uh, they, 
there, it's obvious that they are on the weaker team or whatever like that. But I find it for the drills when we're doing the stations, yeah. you can make a station slightly more complicated when you when the when the strong kids come up and then when the weaker kids come up, you can make it a bit easier, which brings them on. That's what, that's what I find anyway. Yeah, you you were talking more specifically within training, and you're and you're you're using your step to make something cha- challenging and 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 uh, let or, or a little bit easier or you know more chance for success given whichever exactly. group comes up in front of you. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Rather than rather than the the go games, which is maybe another is a, is a different argument. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think I think Jason's point of you, you you can't be having kids you know well, oh I'm on the weak team I'm on the I'm on the on you know the shy team that'll be said very very quickly so I think you have to be mindful of that but yeah I, I get so look you know the you can see pros and cons of both and it's a balancing act of what works best and, and you know what works best for the the players and and for the numbers and for the coaches and let's not you know parents as well you know that's another variable in there as well any other questions. I know we're all probably dying to get watching the soccer. Um, so <laughs> that's a joke, by the way. Um, any, any, any other questions at all? I am conscious of I've had this for an hour, so I, I don't want to uh, burn my time too much. Okay, well, look at um, be that as as it is. We'll wrap it up now, and I'll thank you very much. I'll get the emails out to tomorrow. Resources under sevens, under nine. Have a look at our coaching page, uh, our coaching YouTube. There's, there are stuff there. I'm going to send you the recording of this, and I'm going to send you that quick forms thing. Uh, hopefully, I, I think that WhatsApp group um, will be uh, will be of benefit. You know, it'll not be one for sharing the funny memes and funny videos. Um, but uh, so we'll have to be wary of that. But we'll put a couple of wee guidelines in it, and we'll be fine. Um, and uh, I hope you found tonight beneficial. Didn't mean to keep this as long as I did, um, but sure, look, at, um, we're all we're all dying to get back onto the pitch, and, may, and maybe that's a sign. Okay, um, thank you very much. Appreciate you giving up the hour, and please God, we'll see you all very soon. All right, thanks very much. Appreciate it, Evan. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.